So the thing that's different between Hopperhead and Bird, well, Bird's a YouTuber and Hopperhead's new to the scene. And the things that he does is he just says, you know, you refurbish his phones. He's got a friend named Rob the Runner that runs the phones for him. And then Kitty who works on them to get them open so he can get information. But he doesn't really have to tell anybody that, but that's what Hopperhead does. Um, what Bird does is let him know that he flies. He's like, what do you mean by flying? Like a bird, you know, chirp, chirp, a fly. He goes, oh yeah, I shoot birds. I shot a turkey one time. They, they're they really good with their feathers. That they'll bounce the BBs off their feathers. Or shot at a turkey, is what he says. And does like maybe like a turkey call it. <laughs> then whistles, or tries to whistle. Then what happens is bird finds out about it and has his own channel, and that's not good. Not for the uh, old country. So, Hopper had basically kind of hints at him, you like, better watch out, either he's gonna work for him, or you know, he might turn against him. It's either or, really. The only difference is Bird has the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and the Merchant Marines and the National Guard, and the other other guys around there. And, you know, Hopperhead, well, he doesn't, he's not, Hopperhead's not really, really a violent guy. He's not really violent. He's just, he's just smart. He uses his wits to, to make his money. But he, he, he runs with Rob the Runner, who he runs away and they hide and stuff and they use, they're more like, kind of like hackers. Hopperhead, yeah, Hopperhead was like, like a hacker, a little bit religious. He likes Blue Velvet. Bird likes uh, No Country for Old Men because they talk about the movies they like. They probably both wear vests. Like, he wears, this is like a Mark Anthony. A bird might wear something more kind of modern, kind of like, you know, like like Michael J. Fox's character Marty Marty Fly. You know how he wore a vest in uh, uh, Back to the Future. And Norm Alden goes, you know, why are you wearing a life preserver, kid? He goes, well, I'm a life preserver, something like that. It's like, uh, hey Doc, you really thought this thing through? So Hopper Head, who's also known as the Cricket, that's his code name, Bird, we don't know Bird's name. But Hopper Head, he actually does eat like this sometimes. So he's weird about food. So he'll go. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. He does it kind of like to annoy the person that might be watching him eat. Kind of like that. And whistles. One of the codes to rob the runner is this. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a bird. Anyway, it'll be ready in about a year. We'll have a Mac Pro lighting. Maybe some costumes. And Lynn is playing Kitty, who is a mute lady that also suffers from epilepsy and speaking in tongues. So you could say she's touched by God. They all have traits and backstories. Most of them are from the South. Bird, we may not know where he's from. Okay, 69, 10, miles, March 27th. This is probably the second or third part of the vlog, depending on if Albert's is the second part. The tax thing was the first one, tax office first one, Albertson's might be the third one. And I talked about character stuff with Bird and Hopperhead, Kitty, and Rob the Runner. So, and Hopperhead also has a nickname called the Cricket. He calls it a nickname, while Bird, he just says it's a username, and that's all he goes by. So it's that kind of thing. 
where we get into Blue Velvet and where we get into No Country for Old Men is probably them mentioning the movies. That puts, implants a style in their head, in the audience's head. All of a sudden, they're thinking about Blue Velvet. And then he might, Hopperhead might do something like he might have a, some kind of helium thing, like a helium balloon. And then he may take the balloon and inhale it and say something funny. Because that's what Frank Booth was originally supposed to do. He could even say that. Here's what Frank Booth was supposed to talk like, sound like. He could even say that. Because that's something I would do, probably, maybe. So you inhale the, the helium and go, This is what Frank Booth was supposed to talk like. Or this is what Frank Booth was supposed to sound like. You know, we'll get the dialogue down eventually. And that could be something about Hopper Head. So that he has kind of a Frank Booth kind of thing. Like, that's weird. Why would someone do that? Even though if he takes it serious, it's kind of weird. It's a lot of traffic. So it's about 442, tons of traffic. So what keeps Bird pretty much safe is, is the fact that his channel grows. So it grows slowly, but it keeps him safe because everybody knows Bird, the bird. What does the bird do? Well, he may go to a Tyson fight and, and, uh, and vlog it, or he may go uh, vlog traffic or a bird or something, or cricket. And what does Hopper Head do? Well, you know, I don't know. He messes around with phones. Okay, they are bringing the butterflies to the Botanic Garden. So if you have a FWBG, that's a Fort Worth Botanic Garden membership, you get to see the butterflies for a little bit cheaper. Now dinosaurs are here, and the dinosaurs are at the garden. You got the T-Rex, you got the Brontosaurus, you have the Pterodactyls, the Tri thing has the triangle head on the end of it. Triassosops, the Triassosops. And there's a lot of them, and they're all there at the Botanic. Now, if you go further down here, to the left, you'll see, known as Casa Manana, they're doing two shows right now. Okay, they're gonna bring in Grease, and they're gonna bring in Mary Poppins Jr., which I think they're doing Mary Poppins Jr. first. They already did once, and they already did Susical the Musical. So, now they're on their way with, and these are like, I think it's from New York. I saw lunch there a long, long time ago in the 90s. It was really good. I even got teared up on it. It was it was a really tight musical with really good music. It was about these um, food vendor people in New York City. Now, they're having a problem with that in New York on the Brooklyn Bridge. They cleared out all the vendors in the Brooklyn Bridge. I don't know if they bring them back. But it, it, it was vendors that were on the Br Brooklyn Bridge now this was about all of New York City that were like vendors and there were secretly angels in the in the in the uh, in the musical. They were they were angels that were hidden as uh, food vendor people. It was good. It's called Lunch. It was kind of a I'd say maybe you could even call it a semi faith based musical, possibly. But there was this one note where this guy hit this note. And he said like the word. It was like ooh, or the sound ooh ooh at the very end. He held it for a long time. So Grease is coming. That could be exciting. That could possibly be good. Mary Poppins Jr., I don't know. If you're a kid, maybe. Hamburger, 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 hamburger. 635, 1.2. All right, so so it's someone approached Linda. It was like some chick or something and said, you know, we saw your YouTube show. And then... uh. She was like, oh, well, we're, bro we're brother and sister. She says, yeah, but I saw you kiss on it. And then she said, well, we're from Tennessee. <laughs> the funny thing is about uh, about it is that we we rarely, the only time we rarely like, like kiss, like pet kiss, is at the very end of the show usually. It's just usually, you know, like that. Which people do that in like all different types of countries and stuff. Just, you know, it's just a, a, a cultural thing. But yeah, she's like, oh, we're brother and sister. She's like, oh, really? He's like, yeah, we're from Tennessee. But I don't know. I don't know how they would have found out, though. At least they knew me. I only have 770-odd subscribers. That's not that much. So, and and we only, we only film interiors when it comes to the actual place. We don't film the outside of it. Not the outside structure. There is a road that is sometimes filmed but that's still a general kind of thing. It's just a, a main road. And you'd still have to find out the, you'd have to know the person to know that road. At least you can look down at satellites. You wouldn't be able to really tell those roads. Cause I don't film the street signs in that area. 
Like sometimes I film street signs, like in delivery and like out here, but I don't film street signs. That road, you'd have to know what it looks like. Then you'd have to see the show. So it'd have to either be fed to them and they would know about it, which I don't know how that would happen. And then one time I had a problem with one of these kids that's nearby that said, hey, what's up with this YouTube SHIT? And I almost was like to the point where like, how did he even know? Um, Cause I don't really ever say you, you, YouTube, I say please subscribe show. And uh, that was the same one that tied a grocery bag of ripped up cigarettes to my back door, which I thought was kind of very strange. All right, so Modern Art Museum, they are doing Surrealism and Us. It's Modern Art Museum of Fort Worth. I used to live right there in the Darnell apartments. Yeah, but you'd have to know who I am to really leak that. That's why I keep certain things secret. So, I don't know, I'll find out. Dickies Arena, that's where they had the uh, rodeo. The winner was like, I think it was like up to a million to two million in prizes. Did it for quite a bit of time. It's a big arena. Simmons Bank Plaza right next door to it. Oh, it's a bad a detour. I can't tell how, how the detour is though. And there was rumor that John Cusack was bringing in Say Anything and 16 Candles, but I think it was Bill Rogers that was next door. It'd be a big place to show a movie though. It could be done though on a jumbo screen. Now this is where we went when we were kids. So we would go to this museum and we would see like natural arts and sciences or whatever. The uh, There's a dog right there, it's kind of rescue dog or something. And that's like a new addition to it right here. The National Cowgirl Museum has been added. And that's where it was. Fort Worth Museum Science and History. So it's the easy way to say it. Fort Worth Science and History. And that looked very different when I was a kid. And there's the observatory and where you would go for, I guess, uh, astronomy. So I got it backwards. That's the observatory over there. That's IMAX, whatever. Omni, whatever it is, you know, where they show the uh, 70 millimeter huge films. It's right there in the back where they sit like in a dome kind of thing. And it's like huge, we're very wide film. And it's like kind of like a cyclorama kind of thing watching it on, it's kind of curved. I guess they call it what, IMAX or something? Now it's in a lot of different movie theaters, but that's like the traditional one. You'll be able to see Civil War on that. It'll probably, it might go there. I don't know for sure. It is an, it is shot in IMAX, I think. I'd have to double check. Anyway, so this is kind of the theater that really discovered me. It wasn't Pascal High School, it was right here. It was W.E. Scott Theater right here. That's where my first training was in what's called Stage Combat. It's like a stage combat class, which was secretly an acting class. It was Fort Worth. Now it's Fort Worth Arts Center. But William Scott Theater, they call it Scott Theater, it is right there. I performed there. I did, uh, played Apollyon in uh, Pilgrim's Progress, which is one of the main role, roles. I think it's in Act Two. It's a pretty, a pretty big role. There's a sword fight sequence. And then look again is going on right now at Kimball Art Museum. Which looks pretty neat. It's like a lot of close-ups and stuff. That's where the Alejandro footage was. Linda and I went all around there, it was a big crowd. Got the got two songs on it and then went home and erased the footage on accident. And I told Linda about reverse tracking. So I ran in front of her and pulled backwards. So she, she was running. She turned around backwards and started running backwards. And I, I was like, what are you doing? And I, cause I said reverse tracking and she was on track. So I got in front of her and started running backwards while she was running. And then I said, revert, we're gonna reverse tracking. And then she turned around backwards and ran backwards. I wish I had that footage. Unfortunately, 
I didn't check everything correctly. And it's like as if back in the 35 millimeter days, it all got exposed and you lost the footage. Same thing. I didn't follow the proper sequence. So it ended up erasing. Meaning what I did was I had the edit down. So now I know now if I'm at a concert, I'm getting viable footage. If it's 10 minute worth shot or something and it has the music and it has stuff that I can, I can use. Because Alejandro is like a 72 year old rock musician. You want to upload right then and there right on spot or right as soon as possible and then mess with everything later. I went and edited and did all this editing. And then what I did was I took, I, I realized it was, it was unsupported on memory. So I took all the dailies out that we're using thinking in my head that that would still work in the editor and it erases it. So I sit there and erased it. I was like, I'd be sure to erase it in the reservoir. So I'd have, you know, so I'd have memory and the phone and boom, it was all gone. Can't get it back after that. Not that I know of but I should have sent up some of it immediately. Really good footage you want to, you want to send up immediate. Nine oh eight five two point seven. That's a Rockwood go karts, mini golf going on too.
Oh yeah, is that, did y'all order it? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool.